All right, no, we're not studying Star Wars today, but we are going to study sinusoids. And so I know a lot of you are at the retreat and couldn't be here for the lesson, so I'm going to record what we're going over today. It is important because actually this is how sine waves are used in real life, and uh, also they come up in calculus and on tests, and including mine, so that's what we're going to go on. It will help if you have a TI-83 or 84 graphing calculator with you as you go through this because it's going to make it easier to understand what we're talking about. So, get started. First thing I want to do is take a look at the function f of x equals sine x. We talked about this yesterday. It's just really the y coordinate as you go around the, um, the unit circle. Pull up the calculator. So, on your calculator, if you go to y equals, you can just type sine x. You don't even have to finish the parentheses. Now, if you just push the graph button right now, you're probably going to get a graph that looks like a straight line, and that's incorrect. So what you want to do is push the zoom button, and you'll see a number of choices, and the one we want is zoom trig number seven, Z-trig, as they say in Germany. We will do Z-trig today. Um, okay, so uh, we'll choose seven and get a graph, and this should look familiar from yesterday. That's our sign graph. Pull it over here, make sure we kind of understand the points with the sine graph. This is at zero degrees. This is at 90 degrees. That's the way I've got it set up. This is 180 degrees, 270, and finally 360. And it actually goes backwards. That's negative 90 degrees, negative 180, um, negative 270 degrees, and negative 360 degrees all the way out here. Uh, once again, just as a review, so you're comfortable with this, if x is 0 degrees, and by x I don't mean the x-coordinate, I really mean theta, and that would probably be a better thing to use, but the graphing calculator uses x. Uh, this is for Hannah. Hannah, you have to know. And um, so don't think of this as the x-coordinate. This is really theta. It's just our graphing calculator uses x as the coordinate. What is the sine of 0? Well, the the opposite side is actually non-existent at zero degrees. If you draw, um, try to draw the triangle at zero degrees, the two rays are on top of each other. You have no opposite side. You have no y-coordinate. The coordinate is zero, so it is zero. So that makes sense that we have a zero right there. Then finally, at 90 degrees, the, um, the y-coordinate reaches its top point at 90 degrees, the y coordinate is up at 1, the coordinate is 0, 1 on our unit circle, and the sine, which is the y coordinate, is 1. And then it, as you continue around the circle, it starts its journey back down, and that's why it makes this curved shape. Some definitions so that you know, we call the height of this curve the amplitude, and we would say that has an amplitude of 1, because it grows from 0 to 1. And we would say that it has a period of 360 degrees, but more typically we express the period in radians. We would say the period is 2 pi, meaning as you cycle around the circle one time, you've gone 2 pi, and that's one period. So this graph actually shows two cycles around the circle, or two periods, starting at negative 360, cycling through to zero, cycling again forward to 360 degrees. Exactly, the amplitude's how high it goes up. Any other questions before I go on? So that's the sine curve. A sinusoid is just basically a sine curve that's been manipulated. And here's all the ways we can manipulate a sine curve, and we're going to look at each one individually to see what it does. And I think most of them will be fairly intuitive. The general formula for a sinusoid is f of x equals a times sine, in parentheses, of b of x. x is our theta, our angle, plus c plus d. So instead of just doing the sine of x, we're going to look at modifying it by changing those numbers a, b, c, and d in order. That's a sinusoid. Uh, sinusoid is spelled S-I-N. Thank you. <laughs> Sinus on oids. Okay, sinusoid. Uh, 
Oh, maybe it roamed a dinosaur that roamed the earth thousands of years ago. No, millions, millions, thousands. There were no dinosaurs unless you're a literalist. Okay, I'm not going to go there. Um, so, oh gosh. Okay, so let me, I'm, I'm going to just take these in order. So it's easiest to see what they do if you just take one at a time. So let's say f of x equals, I'll, I'll modify a and make it three times sine x. So here a equals three, and we'll just graph that function to see what the difference is. And so I'll come in here and go y equals, I'll leave my original sine function so you can see what it looks like, and just plug in, oops, let's do this right, three times sine x and graph that. And if you do that on your calculator, uh-huh. Okay, I said this earlier, but what exactly is a sine squared? Like, not the formula, but what exactly is it? Okay. Um, should I ask Siri? Yes. Yeah. Siri, what's a sinusoid? And oh, that'll be funny if she comes back with a, a really good answer. But it's basically a sine function that has been modified. It just uses a sine function as a base. Checking on that. Siri's still checking. When she comes back with an answer, I'll give you her definition, which I'm sure is better than what I'm going to give. Um, but let's just graph it. I found this. Oh. She found a sinusoidal projection of a map. Oh, well. So, uh, okay, so she didn't find the right thing. If we press the graph button, you can see that it makes basically the same pattern, but all the peaks and valleys are larger. The amplitude has been changed. And the amplitude, instead of being 1, is now 3. A, a actually stands for something. You know, I've got to tell you, B, C, and D do not stand for anything in particular, but it works out that A does stand for something nice, amplitude. And when we're talking about AM radio, that's amplitude modulation, and that is exactly how AM radio transmits its signals. It modifies the amplitude of the, the wave that it's working with. Uh, right. So with this, we have A equals 3, which means the amplitude is larger. Exactly. Good idea. Does does making A less than 1 make it smaller? So let's just graph it and see. And your intuition is right, by the way. If we come in here and go uh, amplitude, say, uh, 0.3. Oops. 0.3 sine x and, and uh, graph that. You, you get almost a flat line, barely going up, barely going down. And here's something that's interesting. Watch what happens if you make uh, the uh, a negative. So I'll just leave it negative 1 and put negative sine x in and graph that. I'm getting kind of some messy graph. But it is the regular graph upside down. And, and if you ever have noise-canceling headphones, this is actually how noise-canceling headphones work. They detect all of the signals coming in of sound, which are sine waves, and they generate the opposite wave so that the waves cancel each other out and you hear silence, golden silence. Now, here's an interesting one that I think you'll enjoy. As a matter of fact, it's so good that you may not pay attention to the rest of the lecture. Is that not cool? If you graph that, you make a whole series of smiley faces. Yeah, you can do it while I'm talking. But it is a series of sinusoids that only alter the amplitude. You put in 0.15, sine x, 0 0.30, 0 0.45, 0 0.6. In other words, go up by 0.15 every time. Um, I do the regular sine graph and then go up by 0.5 again. So there is a period where I'm not going up by 0.5 exactly, right there between uh, step 6 and 7. So be careful with that. And I'll let you all have some fun doing that, but if, uh, if you want to go ahead. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and pause the lecture so that you can do it and they don't have to listen to, to us while it's going on. All right, so now that we've had a chance to graph it, and I hope you have too, uh, let's go on and modify one of the other parameters, the B parameter. So with B, we're going to say f of x equals, we'll leave the amplitude 1 rather than, but you can, leave, you can change the amplitude too, and that's fine. And we'll just do the sine of Bx. We're just going to affect the number in front of B and 
let's take this graph and go back and uh, clear these out. You don't have to. You can just watch mine if you don't want to clear yours out. Um, let's say if we say the sine of 4x and graph and see what that looks like. Well, the first graph is our normal sine function. And watch what happens when it gets to the sine of 4x. It's the same amplitude. It is still going up by 1. But the you can see it's got more ups and downs. Specifically, it's got four times as many ups and downs, if you will. Whereas the original graph, and I'll put it in color so that you can see it easier. Here's our original sine curve. And here is the curve of sine of 4x. Same amplitude, still going up and down between, oscillating between negative 1 and 1. But it's the sine of 4x, which means it cycles through its period four times as fast. So if we looked at an angle, x, when it's 0, there is no difference between these two graphs. Sine of x is 0, sine of 4x is 0. But when x grows to 22.5 degrees, the sine of x hasn't really gone up that far. It's probably only around 0 0.38, roughly. Um, versus 4x, 4 times 22.5, is 90, and 90 degrees, it's 1. And the point I'm looking at is right here. You can see the blue line, it's gone up a little to 0.38, but not quite half, versus the red line, which is the sign of 4x, has already reached its peak of 1. It gets there four times as fast. And when x finally gets to 90 degrees, sine of x has reached its peak of 1. At 90 degrees, it's straight up in the air, 0, 1. The sine of 4x, so 4 times 90 is 360 degrees, it's finished its whole first cycle already, and it's back around to 0. And that's this point right here. The blue line has reached its peak of 1, but 4x has already been through the entire cycle, and it's back around to 0. We call that the period, and the period here is a lot faster. The period of the first graph of sine x was 2 pi, but this has a period of, divide by 4, pi over 2. In 90 degrees, or pi over 2, it's reached its, its um, uh, it's gone through an entire cycle. Like, Go ahead, Shelby. You know, unlike amps, mm -hmm. there's an, like an amplitude That literally affects the amplitude of the sine waves that hit your ear. Uh-huh. Oh, my gosh. Now, this is the frequency. Period and frequency, if you study, um, if you take physics, turn out to be inverted. So the frequency, we would say, is four times versus just once. And the formula for amplitude is 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b. And it's absolute value because it doesn't matter whether b is positive or negative. Yes, a negative b would make it go upside down. So if I did the sign of negative x, it would, it would be like it's going backwards. It would be the reflection. But the period still wouldn't change. So a negative 4x would have as fast a ups and downs. Really bizarre curves, yeah. And this is how FM radio works. FM radio modifies the frequency of the signal or the period. And um, so the frequency, how many curves it goes through per second in hertz is the frequency. So 84HAS operates on a, a frequency of 840,000. So in 840,000 <laughs> times per second. <laughs> um, uh, Shelby's getting her shoot tied, if you're wondering what's so funny by Hannah. Um, it, it will go through 840,000 times per second, and that's the frequency. So any questions about B, the frequency? Okay. All right. <laughs> yep. Oh, that tells you the period. I'm sorry, I did that pretty fast. But this... A is the amplitude. B affects the period... Or the frequency. It turns out period and frequency are just inverses of each other. If if I tell you it takes 10 seconds for the sine wave to complete, we would say it has a period of 10 seconds, but a frequency of one tenth per second. If if a sine wave goes 50 times a second, 
that would be its frequency, or each period would be 0.02 seconds because each one, since it does 50 in one second, would be. Don't worry about that. Just the period is 2 pi divided by b. Okay. So that's a and b. C and D are a little bit easier to see. I'm going to take those backwards. Ooh. Yep, here's D. D just shifts. It's just a vertical translation. So basically, it's like making a parabola. Yeah, it, it follows all of our other function rules. Right. Oh, OK. I've forgotten that. So it, it, but it does, it's just like raising up a parabola, this raises up the sine function. How much was this one raised? Well, instead of going through a zero, it now goes through a two. So I can look at this graph and tell you that D equals two. All of the functions, uh, the, all of the values were raised by two. Uh, by the way, the amplitude is still one because it's from its base, kind of that middle line up, it's still only going up one each time but the whole function has been translated vertically by two units. Of course, a negative d would move it down. Questions on that? Then the next one is, well, the last number is c. What happens when you have x plus some number in here? And here's what the graph looks like when you have uh, x plus 90 degrees. Normally, the sine function comes through and does this. So does it move its own energy or to the left? It is a horizontal shift. So it's to the left or right. And if you remember when we were studying functions, plus 90 actually means to the left 90 degrees. So this blue line has been shifted over 90 degrees. As a matter of fact, this is the same as the cosine. I want to show you three graphs right now and actually graph it. You can't. They're exactly the same. So go back to our graphs. Here's what sine x looks like. In the next graph, I'm going to do x plus 90. And in the next graph, I'm going to just say cosine of x. And we'll put all three up here so you can see why they're the same. If I hit the graph button, there's our normal sine graph. The next one's going to shift it to the left by 90 degrees. And if you watch cosine, you're not going to see it appear at all because it's exactly what x plus 90 is. Cosine is at its peak when um, sine is just getting started. And then when sine gets up to 1, the x-coordinate goes down to 0. And it's always kind of a little bit ahead of the sine by 90 degrees. We call that the phase, by the way, a phase shift. X, yep. Oh, I know. So let's look at a chart so that you can really kind of see this. Here's X. Let's look at what sine of X is. We'll look at sine of X plus 90 in parentheses. And we'll look at cosine of X. Okay, when X is 0, now this is not my X coordinate again. This is the angle. When the angle is 0, the sine is also zero because think about where we are on our unit circle. We are right there at the coordinate zero, one. So, I mean, one, zero, <laughs> one, zero. So sine is zero. But zero plus 90 is 90 degrees. What is the sine of 90 degrees? It's actually one. Meanwhile, what's the cosine of zero? It's also one. So at zero, cosine's one, sine zero. But if I add, if I look ahead to 90 degrees, sine's 1, cosine of sine of 90 plus 90, that's 180 degrees. Well, that's back down to 0, and cosine is also 0. Hi, right, Carol. So just a second. There we go. Uh, okay, so that concludes our um, sine, um, sinusoids, and here's what a test question will look like. I'm going to pause it so I can create the test and not have people who are watching wait too long. Okay, apologize for the delay. We're back again for the final little bit. The idea on this test would be a series of questions like this. I would give you five functions, five graphs. 
you match up which graph goes with which function. You can either connect them by the lines, or I'll just put the letters in, in next to it right there. So A, B, C, D, or E, which one is just plain old sine X? Close. E. E is right. E. Um, because sine starts at 0. This one started at 1. Um, sine of 4X? A is right. Frequency's gone up. For sine X? C, because the amplitude, sine of x plus 90. Now, this is the one that's been shifted over. That one's B, exactly. And then I think D is the easiest one to actually see. It's gone down. So, great. So, thank you all for watching. Thank you. Well, I'm going to keep it up. I'm just stopping the recording. <laughs>